Inside of this box I've got the amazing low-cost DIY Tivo Tarantula 3D printer. If you are looking for a cheap but quality printing 3D printer, you might enjoy this video. I want to quick unbox and mount it and also give my first impression about this awesome 3D printer. So let's get started! <laughs> What's up my friends, welcome back! The first thing I've got to say about this kit is that the packaging is pretty amazing. At least compared with the other DIY kits that I reviewed. I mean it even got the Tarantula logo on it, even inside of the shipping box. So personally I think that's pretty cool and give this kit a nicer look. It is quite clear that they've put some effort into packaging this kit and avoid shipping damage. Usually, the other DIY kits that I've mount as the Prusa, Annette, Tron XY were packaged in the common white foam and cardboard box and they had no manual, just a video instruction or no instruction at all. And here comes the next cool part. This kit comes with its own assembling manual with color photos, schematics and assembling plans with all the steps, so mounting this printer should be quite easy and fast. You will also get a full part list with this kit, in case you lose any part and you need a new one. So let's see the kit. You first have two samples of PLA and ABS material, and that's quite nice. Then all the small parts are labeled, as the manual tells us, in order to faster assemble the kit. All you have to do is to check the part code and the reference in the manual and follow the steps. So on the first level we have our heated bed. I really like the idea of insulating the bottom part. In this way it could reach higher temperatures and also maintain the temperature for longer periods of time. That would make the MOSFET on the main board work less time and have a longer life. On the next level we have the step motors which are basic NEMA 17 motors but with the TIVO logo on it. On the same level we also got the power supply which I personally don't like because all the wires are exposed and since I've moved the printer around a lot this could be quite dangerous. I will probably print a plastic cover for the connectors and put the power supply apart in order to keep it safe. There are a lot of 3D models for that online and I leave some example in the description as well. Ok, here is the extruder nozzle with a bit heat sink, so only the bottom side will be hot. This should prevent filament bending or clogging. The feeder is separated from the printer and I like that. This is a new model and we will have to configure it later. The plastic that it's made of seems quite fragile, but I really like the extrusion system. It has a very good grip, so the filament won't slip. It also seems very easy to insert the filament in the hole. Next we have the nice bearings and a bunch of acrylic parts and this level it's done. Finally on the last level we have the aluminum parts, big and small profiles the lid screw and also a bunch of more acrylic parts. Here is the LCD with a rotary encoder control and an SD card slot. Of course we have a bunch of small screws and metal parts bags, all labeled in order to help you mount the printer. This is the main board of the printer, which is the MKS Base version 1.4 board with the well known Atmega 2560 microcontroller the same chip that the Arduino Mega has. Ok, so I distribute all the parts on my workshop table, in order to select the first part I will start with. I check the manual once again and I start assembling the printer. I won't explain all the steps since there are already a lot of videos about that and you will also have the assembling manual. Follow all the steps in the guide. I think that the first thing that you should do is to peel all the acrylic parts, which is always painful. 
I don't know if there is already a machine that could do this for me, but if there is not, I should invent it and get rich. Ok, the acrylic parts are ready. The first thing is to mount the bottom chassis of the printer, followed by the Y-axis transmission moving parts, with the belt pulleys and the Y-axis carriage, with the hotbed support. By the way, using these soft and rubber coated bearings, the printer noise will lower a lot compared with the common used linear bearings and smooth rods that the other DIY kits I've mounted had. Ok, now we start with the upper part of the printer. We add the side profiles of the Z-axis and next the Z-axis right moving parts, with the pulley for the belt. Next, we prepare the left part of the Z-axis that will support the step motor for the X-axis movement. Once the Z-axis is ready, we prepare the X-axis carriage with the extruder nozzle and fan. Then we slide it in place on the X-axis profile and make sure it can move smooth. One more thing I like about this kit is that it uses a centered nuts. As you can see, the hole is not centered. So if the carriage is loose and moves, just tighten the nut a little. And as the hole is not center, you will get the bearing closer or further from the profile and the part won't move anymore. Now add the X-axis profile and tighten the nuts. Now close the frame with the final top aluminum profile. We add the lead screw. For that, we prepare the Z-axis motor and the lead screw nut. Fit the motor in place and then tighten the screws for both parts. Now prepare the extruder motor. Place it on the printer side and add the teflon tube from the extruder to the hot end. Finally, I add the belts for the X-axis and Y-axis and don't forget about the hot bed. Add the screws and the resorts and close the nuts. Ok, the body is ready and looks awesome. This printer can be more beautiful. Now we should add all the electronics, starting with the end stops for each axis. Using the schematic included in the manual, I make all the connections. Connect the wires from the power supply to the main board and from the main board to the step motors and limit switches. Connect the wires for the hot bed and extrusion nozzle and also the thermistor that will control the temperature. That's it, the printer is ready. Now of course we should give it a test. As always, in order to compare results, I will print the Lucky Cat file. I create the G-code using Repetier and save it to the SD card included with the kit. Insert the SD card in the slot and select print from SD card. Be careful, if you use the new type of extruder, you have to set the steps per millimeter for the new kind of the extruder. For that, go to control, motion, extruder steps per millimeter and insert this value. By the way, the old type of extruder is also included in the kit, so don't worry. Ok, now we can print. The printer starts printing with no problems. Once finished, I observe the print results. Quite good, right? The layers are perfect and the entire part has very few errors. I want to add some extra improvements to this printer. The first thing I want to add is the cooling fan, next to the extruder since the printer doesn't have one. This should improve the print quality a lot. So I print that part using ABS filament since the part will get quite hot next to the hot end. You could download all the extra improvement parts from a link below. So make sure you check the video description. The second thing I will add is the extra mount for the Z-axis corners to give more strain to the structure. You could print this part using PLA. I mount the extra parts to my printer 
and now I should print a spool holder for the filament and then the printer will be perfect. I designed a spool holder in Blender, print it with PLA material and screw it in place. Done! My new Tarantula 3D printer is now perfect! Next I made some more prints and they all turn out great. Now I should give my final opinion about this kit. Well, what should I say, the printer is amazing and if you're looking for a budget 3D printer, I sincerely recommend you to buy it. It is very low price, almost the same as the Annette A8, but personally I think it is way better than the Annette. All the parts are improved. You've got the metal strong body, nice smooth bearings that lower the noise a lot and make the axis move a lot better. It is very easy to build and in my opinion one of the best DIY kits. So if you like building stuff, this is your kit. The manual is very well explained and everything is well labeled, so you should have no problems assembling it. I love the hot bed. It gets hot very fast and it could reach temperatures up to 120 degrees, so printing ABS should be no problem. Also, the bed already has gripping material on it, so you could directly print on it. I also love the new type of feeder for the extruder. It is way easier to use it and insert the filament into it. The main board is properly cooled with a direct fan but the kit does not include a cooling fan for the printing area. But I've made my own in a couple of hours. Now for the parts I don't like, as always the power supply could get way better and safer, or maybe include a case for it in the kit. Another thing that I think is strange is having a lid screw only on one side. I'm not sure but that could affect the lifting of the axis due to non-proportional applied forces on each side. The rest of the printer is just great. You could mount it in around 3 hours, calibrate it a little and start printing. It is much silent than the other printers, faster and with a decent precision. That's it, that's all for this great 3D printer. Don't forget to check the description for the extra 3D parts, some more information and also a coupon link where you could buy this printer. Also, check my new Patreon page if you like to help my project and make my workshop grow. Always check the links in the description for more information. I hope that you enjoyed this video, if so, don't forget to click the like button like crazy and share the video with your friends. If you have any question, just leave it in the comment section below or my Q&A page. Also, don't forget to subscribe and watch all of my other great tutorials. Thanks again and see you later guys.